Okay, hi guys, I just want to show you a little bit about how V-Line works. So this is what I'll try to do. This is a little sound, uh, like of a, of a hi-hat or something like that. And I could be controlling this with a metro, sort of banging this, or sending the, this guy, whoops. Sending this guy, um, bangs, to tr sort of trigger the sound. Now, uh, I'll just... Uh, remove this and we'll start from scratch. So first of all, uh, what I'd like to do is use some kind of bass sound um, that I use for the basis of uh, the hi-hat. And for this I'll use this noise uh, that has all, all frequencies in it. Uh, and as you can hear, I well, should be able to hear, oh, I just need to multiply by some things. So, uh, so that will be our base, uh, basis sound. But as you can hear, the volume uh, just keeps on going. It's, it's a constant, or the amplitude is a, a constant um, 0 0.5, 0 0.05 here. Now, uh, in order to get this uh, this t -t 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 effect, I'm turn. I want to turn up the volume or amplitude and turn it down again. So I'll go. Tss. So it's almost like. And if I do this really fast, it can go okay. And this is what I want to try to do using the V line. So I just show you how the V line works. So first of all, you do V line tilde, right? And the V line uh, creates a signal. So it creates this function of going up and then down uh, in a in a sort of smooth uh, smooth line. And the first thing you can see, if I, if I try to drag this onto here, then it won't do. It. And that's because I've sort of defined that this now only takes um, uh, floats or integers. So if I just remove that, you can see this turns black, and I can use um, signals now to control the volume or the amplitude of this uh, noise here. Okay. So now we have the V line set up. I just want to show you what V line does. It takes uh, messages. So uh, the message says go to some kind of uh, uh, volume. So let's say 0 0.5. We want to turn up to 0 0.5. And how fast do you want the V line to do that? Well, we'll do it in 20 milliseconds. Okay. I can also do one that turns down again. So I can do zero, go down to zero, like that, zero, and that that take zero, uh, twenty milliseconds. So, uh, so twenty milliseconds is a little low, so you can't really hear sort of the effects. Let's go three hundred milliseconds up, and let's say a thousand milliseconds down. Okay. Now, of course, I like the bang to sort of trigger this at the same time. And what's really handy here is that I can, for instance, do this. I could bang these two at the same time. Now, if I do that, then what will first happen is it will try to turn, the, uh, turn this function up to 0 0.5 and let that take 300 milliseconds. But at the same time, it will try to turn it down and, and let that take 1,000 milliseconds. So there's this cool thing that's sort of, you can give it an extra parameter to say, well, don't trigger now, but trigger after some uh, amount of time after I receive the bang. And that, of course, should be 300 milliseconds because that's the time it took to turn up. Okay, so I'll do 300 here. And now it turns up. It also, this bangs immediately, but it doesn't really execute this until these 300 seconds have gone, exactly the same time it took to turn up. So you get this nice smooth curve that goes up to 0 0.5 in 300 milliseconds and then goes down again, uh, taking uh, 1,000 milliseconds. Now, what we can then do, instead of having these two messages, we can actually put the two messages into one. So if I do 0 0.5, let that take 300 milliseconds, comma. So a comma, when working with messages, just means, okay, this is one message, this is another message, I'm triggering them at the same time. So that's sort of the syntax. So let me trigger that instead. Let's do like that. So now you can see first this is triggered, then this is triggered after 300 milliseconds. 
Now, of course, to get a high hand, I like a much shorter attack. So let, let's do 15 here, uh, and let's do 100 for the uh, release. And then, of course, this shouldn't, uh, the second one, you shouldn't re uh, wait 300 milliseconds to trigger this one. Uh, you should wait 15 milliseconds because that's the time it takes to reach the peak. And that's the time where you want it to go down again. So this should be changed to 15, of course. Okay. And then you get sort of a more percussive sound. Short attack, a little longer release. Now, in order to get sort of to control the... Um, uh, uh, the frequency content. So here we have all frequencies. So you get this. <laughs> if you want a little bit higher, <laughs> uh, then we need to filter the sound. Okay. So we can use just uh, um, a, a simple built-in filter here. It's called the HIP. And the HIP is a high pass filter. So it only passes the higher frequencies, removes the lower. So let's give that, uh, I don't know, 4,000. So now you should hear that the sound is quite different. I can even uh, change it to 8,000. It comes even higher, so it removes more and more of the low frequency content. So this, think of this here, the noise and the and the uh, and the filter here as sort of the this is the sound base that you have, and the way that we control the amplitude, what we also call the envelope, is what gives it this short percussive t -t -t. If we didn't have that, if if we just would do did, did like this, zero point, uh, so zero point we just get noise, right? So it's because we can control how we turn up and turn down that noise that, um, that we get this uh, percussive.